Good morning. Welcome in War Chant TV. I'm Jeff Cameron alongside managing editor Ira Chaffel. It's a good day, buddy, because two years ago, can we start big picture? Yes. Uh, here we are at the Tour of Duty. Uh, they just wrapped up. We heard from Coach Norvell and strength and conditioning coach Josh Storms. And obviously they're very impressed with the work that they've put in. Tomorrow's the luncheon and then we get spring football on Monday. So we're going to give you some big picture uh, views here for some of the newcomers, some of the, you know, some of the transfers, some of the freshmen. Uh, but I got to tell you, Ira, as we sit here today, you and I did a stand up a couple yeah. of years ago together. It's a very different conversation for Florida State football. I think that's the real story, isn't it? That when you look out there now, they've got athletes in every segment group, and they've got a depth of talent that they just didn't have even two years ago. Yeah, and you can tell guys were kind of swimming just physically and mentally going through these drills two years ago. It's, it's cool to see some of these older guys now, mm -hmm. the Kentron Portiers and Darion Williamsons and even the guys, second-year guys, Rodney Hill and Azaria Thomas, guys who have been in the program. You know, when we saw them two years ago, we didn't know what it was supposed to look like. You know, we, everybody was new to it. And now you've got guys who have been through it for one, two, three years. And then you see these impressive newcomers and you want to focus on the newcomers because they are impressive. But it's hard also not to look at, look at some of these older guys and compare them to what we saw two years ago. Yeah, the transformation of body types for several of these guys. And then, like you said, the assumed leadership roles as they push the new guys through and some of their compatriots, the veterans that have also uh, come around and gotten themselves in a position to really compete. And I think that's the whole thing here, Ira. Every time I looked at a position group, you know, they've hit it big, at least athletically, on these two new tight ends that came in here. You look at the new offensive linemen and you think about the depth of competition they're going to have there. They may run five deep at defensive tackle and the rotations there as we begin to look at these guys. They've all committed to these workouts. They've all put on the right kind of weight or lost the right kind of weight that they needed to. And I just think this the, the number of singular words that uh, we'll use over and over and over again, or word, I should say, is, is competition. Well, even, you know, again, going back to two years ago when this the transfer portal, uh, just I guess the phenomenon that is Florida State in the transfer portal really started with Jermaine Johnson. First time we saw him out here in the spring two years ago, it was like, okay, that guy looks different. He's in the NFL. He looks like an NFL guy, <laughs> right. and sure enough, he's in the NFL. Well, you walk in today, and a lot of these transfers Correct. have that look. Jaheim Bell mm. looks like an NFL football player. Uh, Byers, Jeremiah Byers, the, the offensive lineman who transferred in from Utah. Where do like you see that kid move, folks? I mean, he looks like he's been in the NFL for five years. He's, he's a I mean, monster. We haven't seen him block anybody, but physically and the way he can run, it's different. And then those tight ends. You know, Kyle Morlock is a guy that didn't get as much hype probably as is uh, Jaheim Bell, but man, he is well put together, can really move. And again, there's no pads on, no football is really involved, but uh, they all pass the eye test. Well, they present real problems. You keep thinking about, you start to dream of what they could do with that versatility now. Um, if, you, if they want to go heavy, they got enough guys to do that now. If they really want to spread you out and get these singular matchups, they're going to be able to do that as well. I guess, why don't we go through here some, if you will. We can just kind of take a cursory glance at uh, the transfers as well as the freshmen. By the way, we can't sleep on the freshmen. Oh, there man. were several really impressive looking freshmen. To interrupt you real quick on that, one guy that stood out, and again, I think it's a little bit under the radar. Well, two guys. Um, definitely KJ Kirkland, a freshman defensive back. Okay, from Jacksonville. well, that's my note. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to jump the that's gun, my, buddy. That's my oh, note. Oh, I was going to go on and on about just, Kirkland. Yeah. It's funny, it's like we, you know, we we have six, seven people here from More Chance staff, and everybody you talk to, whether it's you know Aslan or Gene or whoever, Tom, when you get together, everybody brings up KJ Kirkland. It's impressive, and I wouldn't be surprised if they don't. Just speculation on my part. Nobody has said anything about this, but when you look at his body type as a true freshman, he could be a linebacker. I mean, he's a big player in the secondary, and he, he kind of fits the mold of the modern kind of, you know, you, you look at a guy who's got a diversified set of skills and that length. He's that guy right off the bat, and he really moves seamlessly. Quindarius Jones yeah, also yeah. in that group. I mean, it's they don't look like freshmen, you know, and again, it's it's they're, 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 there's a lot of competition in that secondary, and Mike Norvell talked about that when we spoke to him afterwards. There's a lot of competition in that secondary. You brought a lot of guys back, and you also brought in some transfers like Pentrell Cypress and some others that we might talk about. But but those those freshmen, I, I think whether it's finding roles on them in special teams or somewhere, they are uh, very impressive. Yeah, a few times over the last couple of years, you'd see a guy, you're like, oh, it looks like they hit on that one. Now you're saying it about a lot of guys. We're going to probably repeat ourselves over and over again. It's just the depth of athlete that they've been able to bring in in order to flip this roster creates a very different viewing experience for us covering this program. It's just not the same as it was two years ago, and that's why the expectations are so high is the depth of talent and size and speed that they have now. It's um, – it, it, it's a testament to how quickly they flipped that roster, too. Yeah, another impressive uh, veteran. You know, there were a lot of veterans that were impressive, and Norvell talked about that, and Josh Storms talked about that. The, some of the ways, some of the older players, 
you know, they're not going to make the jumps that the freshmen and sophomores are going to make. Those guys physically, as they're becoming grown men, the younger guys are going to make the bigger jumps. But, but they've been impressed by some of the leadership and things like that they've seen from the veterans. But Winston Wright is a guy physically, it's good to see him be able to cut, put his foot in the ground. No hesitation. Make, yeah, and, and they said there's no limitations for him now. And we watched his whole rehab process last year. He had the car accident in the spring. We watched those practices last summer, and it was everybody was waiting. Will we see? Will we see him get on the field this year? And it just never really, you never felt like he felt confident in cutting on that knee. Now they say he's full go, and you can tell. On the subject of transfers, and, and he was one as well, obviously, and so now it's good to see him back. But we already mentioned Jaheim Bell. We forgot to mention Daryl Jackson. Yeah. Uh, the competition guys, I mean, I can't really keep saying this now. I mean, there are a lot of guys. I think there are going to be some hurt feelings out here uh, <laughs> between the offensive and defensive line this year. Some hurt feelings. Um, not only because of the competition, but some guys that have played a lot of football may play less football with the amount of competition that you see now with the transfers and some of those really talented freshmen as well. Yeah, and these tour duty drills are, are really the, – the skill guys are always going to stand out because they they can run all day. Yeah. They're tremendous athletes. Imagine Quickness, that. Travis agility. J looked good again. Yeah, he did. Um, <laughs> but when you – but. Some of those linemen, when they can stand out, like you said, Daryl Jackson, Julian Armella is a guy physically. He's got bigger. I mean, he's he just looks like a, a grown man, like a grown college football player. The competition at those positions is going to be fierce. And and Josh Storms, the strength coach, said it's been going on. He said you can see them. You know, and if you haven't watched the videos yet, you can watch Norvell's and Josh Storms uh, interviews after the, the uh, session today. But he said in the weight room, you you would see it like guys looking at other guys. You know, how many how many plates are they putting on? Yeah, and, and that those challenges and those those uh, co that competition started in the weight room and will continue this spring. Well, I think if you're a player here, you recognize what's been done. I mean, you and I watch this, we observe, we talk about this player looks different. This guy's added the right kind of weight. This transfer looks good. But these players live it on a daily basis. They're in there in the workouts together. They're out here every day. They know the level of competition. So if you want to be part of something special, and clearly this is a program moving in the right direction, then you're going to have to put in the work and the time and the effort on a daily basis now to beat out your competition and that does in a weird way form camaraderie because I think everybody going to war together only makes you closer and you're seeing that right now I didn't really see a lot of loafing out here today at all and they pushed them yeah. uh, you had a lot of guys who were on the brink as Mike Norvell talked yeah. about and were able to push through that and I think that was evident I think it was better than last year's version and the year before yeah. us yeah and he said you want to get them to the brink to where they think they can't go any further but then take another step and see if they can push through that and uh, I think you see that but the other thing that's cool is just that we didn't probably see two years ago is just the, the chemistry, the camaraderie between the entire team. Yeah. When the defensive uh, group finished their drills before the offensive group, they came over and cheered on the offensive players. When the offensive players finished first, they would go over and cheer on the defensive players. Again, you know, some teams talk about that, but it's good to see it, especially in a situation like this where everybody's gasping for air, everybody's tired, and yet they're, they're still encouraging other players. You know, I guess to make a larger point here as we kind of wrap things up, Ira, I would just say that we could go through quite literally. I mean, in my notes, have, I feel bad that we've singled out some players because there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them is the point. I mean, I I, I thought that uh, Kenai Charlton yes. lost uh, a lot of weight and looks good. He looks yeah. really good. His feet are good. He's moving really, really well. I thought Bishop Thomas had a great day right. today, really moving well. I, I, I love the willingness for Coach Norvell to also talk about a lot of players that are veteran players that we've seen before and maybe moving some guys around. Maybe yeah. you know, he's open to the idea of guys having some versatility within the roster and, and moving them to different position groups. So don't be surprised when we start reporting on that in the spring if we see it, if we're allowed to. Certainly talk about some guys moving around a little bit. Yeah, and, I, and the, that wide receiver group, I think, you know, a couple of those third, fourth-year guys, Darian Williamson and uh, Kentron Portier, really stand out. Again, it's, it got, it's that same theme of guys who have been in the program, know what it takes, and then when you see them compared to some of even the most talented freshmen, Hakeem Williams, we haven't really talked about Hakeem Williams. I was just about to say, and yes, Hakeem Williams <laughs> looks the part, everybody. Don't get nervous. He looks exactly like a guy who would be playing on Sundays. Yeah, I mean, he's he's special. He's every bit the 6'5 and can move and all that yeah. thickness. And I think he's the right kind of body type to come in and maybe get some serious playing time, by the way. I mean, you don't usually expect that out of freshmen, but he's a pretty special one as well. Yeah, and, and, and Johnny Wilson also. I want to give a shout out to Johnny Wilson. That dude is the tallest dude out there. He's 6'7". But man, he he's first through a lot of those drills. I mean, that kid is he's worked hard. He's got a lot of potential, and he's and the, he came back. He's one of those guys that came back for the season, and he uh, man, you can tell he may take another step. Reports galore. That's what we'll be having uh, for you on a daily basis here in War Channel as spring football gets underway. Tomorrow, the luncheon, as I mentioned before, we get an opportunity to hear from Coach and interview the other coaches, the coaches. Uh, throughout the staff. And so we'll have reports for that, too. Be listening to Wake Up War Chant to the Jeff Cameron Show, to Seminole Headlines. Obviously, go to WarChant.com and like yeah, we'll and subscribe full, to WarChant TV. We'll have full observations from this and some stories coming as well at WarChant.com. 
For Irish Chappelle, I'm Jeff Cameron. Aslan doing an incredible job behind the camera as always. Be well, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.